And welcome back to another episode of Mastering Diagnostics with me, Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine. Now, today's episode is a bit different than what we typically do. Um, I'm going to be discussing finding the limitations of the tool you're using or the test you're performing. Now, this discussion was inspired by a recent conversation I had with a good friend of mine and fellow technician about choosing the right tool for the job. What I mean by that is this, every single tool, no matter what tool it is, no matter how inexpensive it is and simple it is to use, or how expensive it is and not so simple to use, every single one of them has its limitations. And being a successful technician means finding those limitations out ahead of time before you implement the tool or the testing technique on a broken vehicle. because. If you don't do that ahead of time, here's what happens. When you encounter what appears to be a fault, perhaps with the vehicle, or the circuit you're testing really might not be a fault at all, but in fact a limitation to the test you're performing, meaning the test can't show you what it is you are trying to see. So for instance, um, we frequently feature lab scope diagnostics here with Mastering Diagnostics channel because I'm such a fond user of that tool. The reason being is the tool has several, uh, I'll call it features, that, that don't create such limitations for me. Uh, the main point being a lab scope is, is very efficient to use because I can use it on almost everything out there. Um, it is very fast. It takes a lot of pictures or samples and strings those samples together with lines to give a visual representation of whatever is traveling down the circuit I'm, I'm measuring on. So it leaves very little to be desired as far as speed goes. And, and accurately capturing what it is I desire to see. Now, as I mentioned, every tool has its limitations. So if I ask for an extreme amount of time to be captured, and I also asked for a lot of samples, I would be limited on how much data I could capture in that data storage tank known as a buffer. So again, even the lab scope, one of the best tools out there for diagnostics in the automotive field, um, Electrical diagnostics, drivability diagnostics is the lab scope, but even that has its limitation. So back to the conversation I had with a fellow technician friend of mine about a DSO versus a digital volt ohm meter or digital multimeter. Uh, the conversation came to be that this technician believed that a digital volt ohm meter or DMM, one and the same, was not a good tool for diagnostics and their Complaint was that this tool only displays digitally um, uh, in, in, in numerical value, meaning the input, the information is not being graphed out. We don't get a good visual representation of what's happening in the circuit. And I agree with that. It's very true. Um, a DMM or digital volt ohm meter is far inferior to that of a lab scope. But it doesn't mean the tool is not of value to us as a diagnostician. And the reason I think many technicians believe that the DMM is inferior is simply because of the fact that they are not using it to its best capture capability. Now, I'll give you, for instance, if I was to view a square wave waveform, like the one you see on the screen here, it's clear to see that the voltage travels, according to what's documented here, from 0 to 12 volts. 0 to 12 volts, 0 to 12 volts. Now, if that happened at a fixed 50% duty cycle, meaning it spent half the time at 12 volts and half the time at 0 volts, knowing that the digital volt ohm meter is going to average out those samples, it will plot a steady state voltage on my display of approximately 6 volts. That's halfway between zero and 12 volts. So the takeaway from that is I never really know if I am staring at a six volt fixed voltage waveform, steady state six volts, or I'm looking at a 50% duty cycle, zero to 12 volt square wave signal. And that would be true. However, using the digital volt ohm meter in a different range. In other words, rather than capture and average out the voltage, 
I can tell the DVOM to capture characteristics of what's being measured on the circuit. And in this case, I would want it to be duty cycle. Now imagine, if you will, for a moment, we are going to be looking at a port injection fuel injector circuit, one that is ground side driven, meaning it's controlled on the ground side by the powertrain control module or the engine control unit. And we are going to be back probing right here, meaning we're going to connect to the ground side of the circuit. We are going to ground our meter as a point of reference, and we're going to be measuring the voltage there. Considering a fuel injector in this instance would pulse one time per engine cycle. And if the engine's at idle and we're idling at about 800 RPMs, that would yield us a cycle time of about 200 milliseconds. So one time per 200 milliseconds yields us about five injector pulses per second. Depending on the refresh rate of my meter, I may or may not be seeing that in what I'd, I would call real time, meaning the meter is going to average it out. We'll display that for a moment when we get outside to the vehicle. But if I were to change the meter over to measure a characteristic of that waveform, meaning injector pulse width, the meter will accurately display what it is I'm trying to derive from that voltage traveling down the circuit, how that injector is being commanded. And again, that all goes to understanding the limitations of the tool you're using. The tool of choice today is the Bosch MMD540H. Now, this pretty nifty DVOM has many, many capabilities, and it's designed for higher voltages, to safely handle higher voltages as well, like we find on today's hybrid electric vehicles. Um, but I'm only going to be featuring uh, a couple of the, uh, of the features of this device today, simply to prove the point on what today's subject is about. So we are going to be making measurements in the voltage range like we would traditionally use a digital volt ohm meter. And then we are going to switch over to a millisecond pulse measurement. That's going to allow us to acquire the same information but give us a, a view of the characteristic of that waveform that we desire to see. Again, making this tool an extremely powerful device rather than one whose limitation would prevent us from seeing what it is we desire to see. So let's head out to the vehicle and prove our point. So we're out at the vehicle. Today we're using my 06 Chevy Silverado with a 5.3 liter engine. And the vehicle doesn't matter. All I'm trying to show you here is how the fuel injector circuit works. And what I mean by that is how we're going to implement our DVOM in two different modes. First in traditional voltage mode when we're trying to measure the actual voltage signal on the injector control circuit. And then we're going to change over and look at that same circuit from the characteristic of millisecond pulse width. And you're going to see in one instance the DVOM has a limitation that it's not going to show us what we want to see. But in the other instance it will. So here's the fuel injector we're going to be referencing. On the left I have a T-pin back probe to the fuel injector on the voltage supply side. And over here I have a T-pin back probed on the control side of the circuit. We're going to be looking right here on the control side of the circuit with our DVOM and we're going to see as the engine runs what our fuel injector control circuit is going to display from the aspect of the voltage measurement of the meter. So the first thing if we are doing is placing the meter lead on the control wire for the fuel injector and acquiring the data in a voltage range setting on our DVOM and as you can see over time, we are displaying what the average is, and the average is slowly dwindling down as we spend more and more time over time uh, referencing ground. But it doesn't give us much information pertaining to how the circuit is actually operating. It doesn't really help us all that much. We then switch our meter over to duty cycle, and if you recall, duty cycle is a percentage of on time compared to off time. So although this gives us a little bit more information about how the fuel injector circuit is operating, it still doesn't quite tell the story we need to see. So we are going to switch over to a different aspect of measurement. And finally, I switch the meter over to millisecond pulse width, and it's going to measure the on time of the fuel injector, the time it spends with the circuit grounded or referencing ground. This gives us the best perspective of how the fuel injector circuit is being driven, how it's operating. 
making the DVOM, which in this case is typically not the right tool for the job, makes it significantly more powerful in the world of diagnostics simply because we are using it correctly and, and monitoring uh, the circuit's operation from the right aspect, uh, millisecond pulse width. So what do you think? Did I prove my point? If we take the time to understand the limitations of the tool we're using and or the test we're performing, it gives us a lot of insight on what to expect when we implement that tool in real life testing situations. Understanding what the tool can't do as well as what it can do will allow you to maximize your return on investment for that tool, meaning to implement it as often in as many situations as possible, maximizing your return on investment. I want to offer a special thanks to Bosch Diagnostics for loaning me this MMD540H. Works very well. I'm very impressed. And I want to thank all you for watching this episode of Mastering Diagnostics with me, Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine. We'll catch you next time. <music>